Coming up, a spotlight on gun laws nationwide and the state of New York signs new legislation. Iowa and South Dakota primaries, we have a preview of some of the races that will be on the ballot. And supply chain issues now affecting the hair industry. Your KCAU 9 News at 10 starts right now. We are Siouxland Proud. This is KCAU 9 News at 10. Good evening and thanks for being with us tonight. I'm Tim Seaman. And I'm Sophie Erber. Congress is back from a Memorial Day recess and new gun safety legislation, one of the first agenda items now to be taken up this week. Our KCA United Washington correspondent Rashad Hudson is on Capitol Hill with a look at the negotiations. It's all inside our top story tonight at 10. Good evening. Lawmakers say they're closer than ever to reaching a deal on new gun safety measures. This comes as pressure is mounting for Congress to take action. The calls for gun control legislation were loud and clear on Capitol Hill Monday. Senators, please act. Don't look away. Gun safety advocates rallied outside of the Capitol demanding action from lawmakers. We will not stop working. We will not stop fighting until every community, every neighborhood, every school in this country is a safe place. Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy and Texas Senator John Cornyn are among the bipartisan group of lawmakers working on a compromise gun control bill. If we reach an agreement, law-abiding gun owners will not be impacted at all. The items currently on the table are investing in mental health care, red flag laws, and expanding background checks. What I'm interested in is keeping guns out of the hands of those who by current law are not supposed to have them. President Biden wants Congress to go further by including a ban on assault weapons, but the president also acknowledges that's not likely to pass given the current gridlock. And this week there'll be several hearings on Capitol Hill involving gun safety legislation. Reporting in Washington, Rashad Hudson, back to you. In New York, those under the age of 21 are now prohibited from buying those semi-automatic rifles. It's under a new law that Governor Kathy Hochul there signed today in the Bronx. This legislation signed as part of a total of 10 gun-related bills that officially went into law, including revising the state's red flag law, which allows courts to temporarily take guns away from those who might be a threat to themselves or to others. These bills make the state among the first to enact a major gun control initiative following a series of deadly mass shootings that's happening currently across the country. We're micro-stamping bullets so law enforcement can have an easier time catching the criminals, and we're closing loopholes so the firearms that are being so cleverly manufactured or altered cannot evade our laws anymore. There's more to do. Thoughts and prayers won't fix this. Another bill signed by the governor restricts the sale of bullet-resistant vests and armor, now allowed only for those in certain professions. Well, primaries in Iowa and South Dakota are less than a day away. And we have a preview of some of the races that will be on the ballots there for voters. On the federal level, a couple of races to watch include Sioux City Attorney Jim Carlin looking to unseat longtime Republican incumbent Senator Chuck Grassley. He was first elected back in 1981. For the Democrats, Abby Finkenauer, Michael Franken, and Glenn Hurst are vying to be the Democratic nominee for that U.S. US Senate race. Other races to take a look at tomorrow, Todd Halber and Marianne Hanusa, who are looking for an opportunity to challenge incumbent State Auditor Rob Sand coming up in November, while Joel Miller and Eric Van Lanker are looking to take down incumbent Secretary of State Paul Pate. Meanwhile, Pate is asking voters to be aware of misinformation. He says that historically, misinformation has centered around alleged changes to polling locations and hours, as well as false statements aimed at spreading distrust. During a press conference today, Pate emphasized several election security measures that are now in place across you, Iowa. In South Dakota now, where there are some races also to keep an eye on tonight, a big one is Constitutional Amendment C. That requires 60% of voters to approve a ballot measure that involves changing taxes or spending more than $10 million. An information pamphlet from the Secretary of State regarding this primary noted a lawsuit has already been filed deeming Amendment C unconstitutional. That lawsuit says the amendment violates the single-subject rule that's already in the state's constitution. 
And other races in South Dakota to look at include the U.S. Senate, U.S. House, and governor's races. Those include in the U.S. Senate, U.S. House, and governor's race. Senator John Thune is running to keep his spot in the Senate. That's against Bruce Whalen and Mark Mowry. Representative Dusty Johnson on your screen there going up against Taffy Howard for the seat in the U.S. Senate, in the U.S. House of Representatives, I should say. And in the governor's race, incumbent Christy Nome is running for re-election. That's against Stephen Haugard. Well, a massive joint city and county project is moving along tonight as developers had hoped. Two city council members getting an update on progress at the new law enforcement center and jail now under construction. Members of the Woodbury County LAC Authority updated city leaders at today's council meeting. Progress remains close to on schedule, according to Authority Chairman Ron Wick. Weather conditions in the spring allowed workers at the facility being built near the Lake Forest Mobile Home Park on 28th Street to continue. Wick says road construction in the area is still several months from being complete and that above ground work should bring uh, plenty of days of work ahead and be visible to folks in the coming days. A lot of the exterior panels on the building and some of the interior walls in the building have been precast at Gage Brothers in Sioux Falls and the jail cells, the actual cells themselves, have been built in Georgia, just north of Atlanta, and so those cells will be arriving here in Sioux City in the near future. Officials said that project is expected to be completed by June of 2023. One Siouxland nonprofit is expanding tonight, and Governor Kim Reynolds made a visit to celebrate the occasion. Hope Street of Siouxland is committed to ending homelessness in Sioux City. They cut the ribbon there on their second facility. It's now on the 1900 block of Douglas Street. In attendance were members of City Council, Sioux City Police Chief Rex Mueller, and we spoke with Hope Street's very first participant, who is tonight celebrating three years sober and is a former house manager. Over the years of my drug addiction, I couldn't be trusted by anybody. Um, and now being able to be trusted, mostly employees, my employers uh, is a big thing for me. It's, it's gotten me to believe in myself. So far in the first three years, Hope Street has been able to help 31 people out of homelessness and on their way to living independently. Well, if you've noticed longer wait times and fewer hairstylists at your local salons and barbershops, you're not alone. KCAU 9 reporter Jason Toctasian tonight taking a look at what's causing the stylist shortage. That's right, Tim and Sophie. The lack of professionals in the hair industry is making some local businesses change how and when they operate. I've been having clients drive from Vermilion. Uh, some of them even drive from Sioux Falls. Um, just to get their hair done. Sioux City is feeling the effects of a national hairstylist shortage, and this is making it difficult to set up convenient appointments. For what is popular now for the summer, box braids, uh, anything long, lengthy, you need to book two weeks in advance. The Cost Cutters Director of Operations explains what's contributing to the shortage in Sioux City. There's been four just in our area hair schools that have closed. So there's less people graduating, so that's affected staffing. Also, it's just taking longer to get through because through COVID, they had to shut down a lot, so people are graduating later. And now local stylists are changing their workflows. We have stylists that float, um, and so they'll actually have a home base, but they will float to a different location to fill in and help out. And with the changes to accommodate fewer stylists, folks like Williams are left to wonder if businesses can stay afloat. I don't think it's sustainable at all. I think that people who are relying on other stylists and barbers um, and they don't have that, it's becoming overwhelming. You're one person trying to fulfill all of these appointments. It's just not possible. Williams also told me she decided to launch a summer program that would teach teens and moms how to style their own hair. Now, if you're interested, you can find that information on our website at sulanproud.com. Jason Toctagian, KCA U9 News. All right, and uh, an interesting night. Not the best for hair, if I'm being honest, right. with the humidity uh, going on across the land. You were telling us about dew points uh, into the 70s, Scott, earlier today. Yeah, it has been very humid outside, and it looks like that pattern's going to continue, so it could be a tough hair week. Might have to use some extra hairspray. It is going to stay mild and humid with high temperatures in the 70s for several consecutive days. We expect to have some occasional showers and storms. And then as we get into the weekend, some hotter weather is going to be on tap, as it looks like highs will jump 
bump into the 80s and close to 90 degrees early on next week. Here's the view outside now from our Port Neal Welding Company camera. This is looking off from the top of the Ho Chunk Center, where we were able to clear out the skies some this evening with a few glimpses of sunshine. The almanac shows that our high temperature today was only able to get to 75. That is five degrees below the average of 80. And this morning it was quite warm with a low of 63. That matches the current temperature in Sioux City. It is 61 in Yankton, 64 in Sioux Falls, 63, the latest update from Spencer, and it is currently closer to 70 in Tacama and Omaha, 68 in both locations, 67 right now in Norfolk, Nebraska. We also have our dew points in the 50s and 60s, so that's a sign that we do have some high humidity. Relative humidity values are currently above 90% in some locations, now at 93% in Wayne, 97 in Yankton, and 94 in Denison. So the air is very humid across Siouxland. And since the wind is still weak, we're seeing that below 10 miles per hour throughout the region now. At only three in Sioux City from the north northwest, there could be an occurrence of some dense fog as we head into our Tuesday. For the time being, nothing to be concerned with as visibility is clear across the entirety of Siouxland. But again, that is something that we could see form up later tonight and through the morning hours of Tuesday. Some patchy dense fog given the high humidity and fairly calm wind speeds. Checking out the radar picture on the broader view, a couple of isolated severe storms were able to form to our west. West of Norfolk, there was some tennis ball sized hail that happened earlier on this afternoon. And you can see that we have some showers and storms that surround Siouxland, but nothing that's been able to crack the dome here this afternoon, really. Just a couple of isolated showers were able to travel through northern parts of our KCAU 9 coverage area. Early this morning, we did have a few showers and storms on the radar, enough to drop close to a quarter of an inch of rain in Sioux City, 65 hundredths in Wayne, and about a third of an inch of precipitation in Denison. As we go through tonight, it looks like we'll have mostly cloudy skies, just a couple of isolated showers as you move north of Sioux City. Waking up tomorrow morning, up toward the Iowa Great Lakes, there might be a shower, but most of us should stay dry through the morning hours of Tuesday. Through the afternoon, we will see a line of some stronger storms begin to come together in the southern third of Siouxland, and it looks like those will track forward into tomorrow night, and then we'll begin to clear out the skies more so as we get into Wednesday. Mostly sunny and some pretty nice weather. Looks to be on tap with highs in the middle to upper 70s on Wednesday afternoon. Here's a look at our latest rain forecast now, and it spills out about a half an inch of precipitation as you move south of Highway 20, half inch to an inch or so in Norfolk, 81 hundredths in Wayne, two tenths in Sioux City, and then as you rise to the north of Highway 20, not a whole lot of precipitation there, perhaps as much as 16 hundredths in Sheldon. But again, it mainly looks like the rain tomorrow is going to be focused to the south. There is also an opportunity at a couple of severe storms to happen. A marginal risk inside of the green on your screen. The best opportunity looks to line up to the southwest of Norfolk inside of a slight risk of severe storms. So there might be an isolated storm or two that creates some large hail or damaging winds, but that'll be the exception rather than the rule. Mostly cloudy skies tonight, a low temperature of 55. And for tomorrow, we're on pace for a high of 75 degrees with some showers during the afternoon and evening, some storms as well, and it will be quite muggy outside. Here's a look at our 9 on 9 forecast. It shows the temperatures will stay in the 70s for a while. Wednesday, a pretty good day, mostly sunny, a high temperature of 76. Expecting to see some showers and storms Thursday and Friday, and then things quiet down as we heat up with highs in the 80s and even venturing close to 90 next Monday. Looking forward to drier and warmer uh, conditions, personally. Yeah, it should be pretty good. If it continues, you're going to have to add a, a kink and curl index <laughs> as to how yeah. folks' hair might look in this humidity. Yeah, some, uh, some tough days for the hair, for sure, especially with the high humidity in the short term, but mm -hmm. some nice pool days shaping up for That's next cute. week. All right, Thanks. Scott, thanks a lot.